Hey guys, enter the stars, and we are locked in the cube, the cube of time. This is a tesseract, and it is a cube within a cube, according to Wikipedia. But it was also the main theme in the 1960s book, A Wrinkle in Time, which features an eight on the cover, written by Madeline Langle who died at age 88. Do you think these are accidents? They are not. Now, this book is all about wrinkling time using the Tesseract that I just showed you, the cube. Now, these synchronicities are just going to continue on and on, you guys, because what we are talking about is truth. We've already talked about the cube being time. And I've never read the book before, but a subscriber recommended that we take a look at this because the cover shows the eight right on the cover. And as I have been given eyes to see, all of you are also now being given eyes to see these things. And when we see these signs and symbols, we know that when we open the book, we will find much, much more because these are markers. They are primers to truth. Now, in Mary Langle's book, she talks about evil. And in fact, it was difficult to get the book published because of its themes about dealing with evil. But the amazing thing, after reading through the cliff notes here in Wikipedia, I find that love was the answer and that the evil in this book, which is what they call it, IT, was only conquered by love, pure love. Now this is very interesting because these are the same things and themes that we've been talking about on this channel. You guys, it's going to get to the point where we have to realize what's going on here. We're going to find these same themes over and over and over again because it is truth okay here in Wikipedia explains the tesseract concept of how time is wrinkled now this is where I believe that it maybe goes off track here because they talk about using the tesseract as a time machine and that's possible but the real truth here is that the tesseract is the prison okay we're locked within it and it does control time all right so anyway i thought i would share this you guys one of one of uh, you guys came forward and recommended that i take a look at this book and i was shocked to see the tesseract and the cube within it that's why i felt compelled to share this with you she also talks about some of the major themes in the book about conformity and being manipulated into it. Now we've talked a lot about this you guys. Even the scenario here on YouTube. Of them not coming right out. And censoring us per se. But rather trying to influence the outcome. Rather than actually stop it from happening. You see. And uh, this book has some of those major themes in it as well. Uh, it talks about the evil dominant group being the one to control the planet okay and that everyone is or has the potential to fall prey to the influence of conformity and how difficult it is to break the conformity and that is the spirit of this world that is what we are dealing with you guys it is all around us and it's so difficult to be good because of all the negative influences around us. I'm not talking about the big crimes of murder, rape, stealing. I'm talking about the little moral crimes. The lying, the taking advantage, the pushing, the greed to have riches no matter what the cost. And the little white lies that will get you there. These are the things that we're talking about selling your soul so to speak for this world's 
objectives and goals rather than spiritual goals because a whole lot of small spiritual goals are what will make up your entire life journey and your entire spiritual notebook in history okay it's not the big things it's how we live each minute of our life you know what what kind of person are we what are we doing with our life um, how do we treat others these are the things of the spiritual that God cares about okay now there are other New World Order themes in this book as well the it entity as we talked about earlier its aim was to enforce absolute conformity on the planet with the claimed benefit of eliminating war unhappiness and inefficiency now, what does this sound like you guys we have a lot of movies coming out one is the purge that, that makes the same claim in which one day every year everyone is allowed to carry out justice their own personal justice on whoever they want so murder things like that are legal for one day and in that movie the one day is on March 22nd 322 so again these numbers exist if we deny them we are only denying reality in keeping our head in the sand the ones in power are acknowledging this reality and we need to too so this book goes on and it talks even more about the black thing which is characterized as pure evil there are many layers to this book okay and I believe the black thing they're referring to is probably Satan himself because he is pure evil and it would probably be like the world government the new world order okay now they also mention Uriel now Uriel is in fact an angel mentioned in the book of Enoch and Uriel in the wrinkle in time is a fictional planet of the galaxy Messier 101 now Nicholson 1968 YouTube channel has done some really interesting work on this number 101 and I'm sure there are further synchronicities between Uriel and 101 Uriel is actually the one who gives the judgment of the fallen angels in the book of Enoch so he says here shall stand the angels who have connected themselves with women and their spirits assuming many different forms and defiling mankind shall lead them astray into sacrificing demons and gods okay this is what's going on right now you guys we are under attack and people are sacrificing themselves to demons and gods through their actions really and that is what was prophesied here and Uriel was talking about in the book of Enoch and then Uriel says till the day of the great judgment in which they shall be judged till they are made an end of and the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens was Madeline Langle referring to Uriel when she named the planet in her book and the coming judgment that would that would occur in the age of Aquarius okay the cover almost looks like it has water on it and you start to see these things when you have eyes to see you start to see these things for what they are okay so we have time the cube the cube being repeated in our consciousness the tesseract it all comes together and we start to understand that some of these books are foreshadowings of the time that we are in now even though this book was published in 1962 so in the book Uriel is a the first stop uh, from the time machine and it's a utopian world filled with centaur like beings who live in a state of light and love so this goes right along the lines of the theme of the angel in the book of Enoch who communicates the judgment of the fallen angels okay now interestingly the sequel to this book was a wind in the door 
And the wind in the door was released in 1973. Again, the year I was born. We talked about the number 73 being the foundation of creation. The numbers 37 and 73. 37 being a cube. 37 pointed cube. Within a star matrix. A 73 pointed star matrix. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, reference previous videos, 7337, and you will find that this number is encoded in Genesis 1-1. It is the number of the foundation of creation. It is the big secret. And interestingly, the author of this book knew that. And I'm going to prove it to you. The book is all about mitochondrial DNA. She also seems to interchange dragons, the serpent with cherubim angels interchanging the two confusing the issue and in this book the characters go within a cell a single cell the mitochondria of the cell and an entire scenario plays out inside the boundaries of a cell and this goes back to the foundation of creation so she knew this okay now i don't know how she knew this Maybe she either knows the secret knowledge or this is some kind of spiritual manifestation of truth. We've talked about both of those scenarios being possible. Now here's the other thing. She goes on to talk about the secret of the atom. She says it's not unlike Pandora's box. And what we must look for is not the destructive power, but the vision of interrelatedness. That is desperately needed in this fragmented planet. Now here's the thing. What are they doing with these Hadron Colliders? The accelerators. They're trying to destroy the atom. To break it apart. And this cryptic comment. That she makes here. Directly is referencing. The colliders. And the accelerators. And the destruction of particles. And she also, again, makes another reference to creation. We are indeed part of a universe. We belong to each other. The fall of, a spar of every sparrow is noted. Every tear we shed is collected in the creator's bottle. Okay? And it talks about here that this book was actually inspired by the naming and counting in the passages in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. Which say that God has numbered every hair on your head. And that God is aware of every sparrow that falls. Okay. So again. God is a God of numbers. And the numbers make sense. So I thought this was interesting. That this entire sequel. To. A Wrinkle in Time. The sequel being A Wind in the Door. Is all about creation. And that it was released in 1973 and we had identified 1973 as the number of creation. Take care and be safe you guys.